And welcome back to Focal Point AFR Talk. Number to call if you'd like to join the conversation, talk about any of the topics we have addressed today. We have talked about God's plan for the Jewish people, the fact that they, by God's design, have hearts right now that are hardened to the truth. Paul says, look, this is God's design to take the gospel to the Gentile uh, world. Uh, we have talked about what's going on with our military, the way that this administration is weakening the military. We've got a 155th Combat Brigade here in Mississippi basically being phased out uh, by the, the, the Pentagon. Uh, we've had Apache helicopters taken away from National Guard units, replaced with transport-type uh, helicopters. Now we've got an entire uh, combat brigade being shut down in, as part of the Mississippi uh, National Guard. Uh, and we talk about this military Bible stick uh, program, how important it is to our soldiers to have this. 888-589-8840, 888 589-8840, 888-589-8840. Talked about how we've got a, a, a severe cramp down, clamp down on religious liberty in our military right now. That's why these military Bible sticks, again, that number, you want to underwrite one for $25, 800-800-2555, 800 critically important that we make sure that our soldiers are strengthened, that they've got not only weapons of warfare in the seen world, but weapons of warfare in the unseen world. Remember, Paul says the weapons we fight with in 2 Corinthians 10 are not carnal, they're not fleshly, they are spiritual, they are divinely powerful in God for the pulling down of strongholds. That's every high thing that's raised itself up against the knowledge of God. So uh, talk about religious liberty in the military, why faith is so important there. Uh, we've talked about uh, biblical roles in marriage, how it's demonized and vilified by people in Hollywood, uh, people on the left, just an all-out onslaught on this new family-friendly movie, uh, Mom's Night Out. Anyway, any of those topics that we've talked about today, you're welcome to weigh in on 888-589-8840 is the number to call if you would like to join our conversation, 888-589-8840. You know, and just going back to what God is doing with the Jewish people today, uh, you know, he says this um, about the Jewish people. Did the Jewish people stumble in order that they might fall? I mean, is this the end of the line for the Jewish people? Is God finished with the Jewish people? They have rejected their Messiah. They reject him to this day. Their hearts are hardened against the gospel to this very day, except for the remnant. You know, I've seen it. I've been uh, on trips to Israel. We had a, a guide who was Jew, not even really an observant Jew, uh, but I talked with him about the gospel. I'm sure many of his Christian uh, tour guidees do, and they're just no budge in him. There's no receptivity at all uh, to uh, the gospel. It doesn't matter how kindly it's presented to him. All of us are very polite and very nice. Nobody was pushy. We were very friendly and we laughed. We got along great with him, but they're just, the, the, meter, just, the meter just doesn't budge. The needle just doesn't budge uh, with him when you share the gospel. So Paul's question is, did they stumble so as to fall? Is this the end of the line? By no means. Rather, Paul says, through their trespass, Salvation has come to the Gentiles so as to make Israel jealous. So the idea is for the gospel to come to the Gentile world, for them to become jealous, for the Jewish people to become jealous of what they see that the Gentile world has because of their belief in Jesus as the Messiah, and that will draw them to the faith. If their failure means riches for the Gentiles, how much more will their full inclusion mean? So we'll talk a little bit about that more uh, tomorrow, but it's very clear. Paul says, "Look, God's not done with the Jewish people. They there's a partial hardening; their hearts have been hardened for a time. But this is not the end of the story. That's why we continue to pray for the peace of Jerusalem, continue to pray for spiritual revival, spiritual awakening, spiritual renewal to come to the Jewish people." Well, let's go to the phones. Let's start with uh, Lewis, Houston, Texas. Uh, Lewis, welcome. What's on your mind? Hey, Brian, I wanted to uh, comment on what you said about the movie and the reaction. Yes, sir. Um, real quick, I'm going to tell you, and I want to make two quick points. Um, I monitor my two teenage daughters' uh, uh, social apps, and one came to me the other day. She said, look, Dad, a girl from church posted regarding how the when you're revealed as gay, you're uplifted, but someone like a Tim Tebow is, is chastised. Yeah. And so I could not believe the vitriolic responses from these teenagers. And it, it, it's sad because they have bitten in, they, they, they've bought in, the lies and the deception, 
And I, I, I warn my daughters of how this is exactly what you're going to face if you stand up for the Lord. Mm-hmm. But And I, I did respond biblically about how it's not about being against gays. It's about loving them enough to tell them the truth. Yeah, absolutely. But basically, uh, the good news is that um, the Scripture, I, I want to remind Christians that Scripture in Second Timothy says, but the man of God must not argue, but he must be patient and kind towards everyone in hopes that God will for eventually will grant them repentance and, 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 and be released from Satan who has taken them captive to do his will. That's kind of a loose quote there. Yeah, Second Timothy the 2. Uh-huh. Well, the other good news is this. I, I believe that... that the people who are of this mindset, whose minds are in darkness, are very strong, and I use that word lightly, when they're in groups. But when you get them alone, if you know your Bible you're, and you've, you've learned how to divide the Word of God correctly, you can have a conversation because they're, they're defenseless. They mm-hmm. don't have the truth. And I, I just wanted to point that out. Yeah. All right. Well, good, Lewis. I appreciate that call very, very much. Thank you for that. And by the way, you know, and, and, and his daughter's exactly right. You look at the difference. And the way Tim Tebow was treated, he was ridiculed, he was mocked, he was made fun of. Nobody, nobody came out and complained about that. Nobody on the left said, hey, look, that's bigotry. Why don't you guys lighten up? Let's celebrate this guy. He's living a decent life. He's obviously a young man of character and principle. You ought to be celebrating this guy instead of making fun of him. No, they just piled on. But then Michael Sam comes out. He lives a lifestyle that the, that the Scriptures clearly reject as normative. And everybody lionizes him, and then they jump on anybody who would raise any questions about the normalcy of his behavior. By the way, uh, sports writers now, this is the sports community, is coming out now. They're not happy with Michael Sam for signing on to do this reality show with Oprah Winfrey. They are not happy about that at all. Uh, You know, because what they're saying is, look, hey, he said this was all about me being a football player. I just want to play football. I want my football play to speak for itself. The St. Louis Rams said we drafted him because he's a great football player, which everybody knew was hoo-ha, but that's what they said. Now all of a sudden, Oprah Winfrey is going to turn his life into a reality show. Oprah Winfrey is coming to training camp. And you've got all of these sports writers now. You know, and what they're saying, look, if I was the St. Louis Rams, I would cut this guy today. This guy's going to be an enormous distraction. He's a seventh-round draft choice. He's not big enough to play defensive line. He's not fast enough to play linebacker. We're going to have to cut him. We just did this as an affirmative action draft. And now our training camp is going to be completely disrupted by the Oprah and her retinue. It's going to turn our training camp into a circus. You know, you look at what the Cleveland Browns are doing with Johnny Manziel. I mean, there's a lot of Manziel mania around that guy. And the, the Cleveland Browns have put a paper bag over that guy's head. They have sequestered him from the media. They said to Johnny Manziel, look, this is not about you being a celebrity. This is about you being a football player. You need to hunker down, focus on your job. We've got a job to do as a team. We have expectations of you, and we expect you to give your full attention to getting the job done instead of being some kind of a a, a celebrity or rock star. And so the Rams have got themselves in a real uh, pickle here, so we'll see how all of that uh, plays out. All right, let's go to Chris in Moline, Illinois. Chris, welcome. What's on your mind? Brian, yes, sir. I sure, I sure do love you, buddy. Thank you. I sure do. I love the show, your ministry, AFR, and I've uh, wanted to chime in on today's topic with the military discrimination against Christianity and the government. Yes, sir. I've got to ask you, Brian, a, a simple yes or no question: Is the government too big and too out of control? Yes or no? Well, I'd be a big fat yes. Okay. I, I if I'm allowed, idea. if I'm allowed a three-word response, you want to just or no? I gave you a three-word response, a big <laughs> fat yes. So I, I apologize, but go ahead. I'll let I'll let it slide. Let me run this by you, and exercise if you will exercise your rational thought here. How about one of the ways we shrink government? We shrink its power. We shrink its monetary income. We shrink its influence. It's by the legalization of drugs. Let me explain very quickly. When the government passed a law that restricts the exercise of a free market and economy, what the law ends up doing 99.999% of the time is bolstering other businesses that go into what's known as a monopoly. 
But when a market is really traded among people, buyer beware, you know, the informed consumer, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, on down the line, we get a smaller government with smaller influence. We get an environment that when God is at the center. Okay, well, let, let, let's, let's, let me ask you this question, Chris, kind of in response, and I'd encourage you to tune in tomorrow. We're going to have a guest on tomorrow, and we're going to talk specifically about marijuana, not the general issue of legalizing drugs, but talk specifically about marijuana, which, Chris, we've now got proof this thing rots people's brains, permanently changes their brain structure. The younger somebody starts, the worse it is on their brain health, the structure of their brain, their ability to learn, their long-term memory. That thing is just a noxious weed. And when they use the word weed, that's a good term for it. But, but Chris, what you're saying is we just ought to get the government out of trying to protect people from that kind of pernicious influence. But, but why, why don't we get rid of laws against drunk driving then? Because if you have laws against drunk driving, you just have a bigger government. You got to have patrol cars. You got to arrest people. They got to take them to jail. They got. Why don't we just get rid of drunk driving laws then to reduce the size of the government? Why don't we do that? I would actually encourage that, and I'll, I'll tell you why, Brian. There is no substitute in governing people's behavior. In in other words, trying to get people to do the right thing, to abstain from in excess in alcohol consumption or to abstain from... Uh, so, but, well, Chris, I'm about out of time here, but but I hear you saying even though people kill people when they drive drunk, we that should not be against the law. No, Brian. All right, well, I mean, I'm, I think I'm going to have to disagree with you on that one, Chris. Anyway, you'll want to uh, catch our conversation tomorrow with this expert on the issue of marijuana. Focal Point, AFR Talk. We'll be right back after the news. Stay with us.